Hello and welcome to Safe Pasture. My name is Sherry Hammers and we are continuing today in our Jesus Our High Priest series. And this is covering a book called The Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. And this book was actually published in 1894. And if you're new to the channel or to this series, I would suggest that you go back to chapter one because this is really a book that builds upon itself. And right now we are on chapter 100. I believe there's 120 chapters in this book. So we are closing in on the end of the book. And so I, I, there's just so many nuggets of wisdom and just pearls of, you know, just, just wonderful, wonderful pearls of, I guess you'd call it wisdom as well, or things that help you live life um, the best you can for God. It's, it, this, this series has run so deep and it bears so much fruit in your relationship with God if you um, understand these things a little more deeply. Anyway, we're going to start with, um, this is the title of this chapter 100 is Enoch, the Walk of Faith. And he starts off with Hebrews 11, 5, and 6. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Andrew starts off, The sacrifice of faith is the entrance to the life of faith, and ever remains its chief characteristic. On the sacrifice of faith, there follows the walk of faith. Abiding continuous fellowship is the fruit of Christ's self-sacrifice and ours. On Abel follows Enoch. Abel shows how death is the entrance to life. He triumphs over death by submitting to it. In Enoch, we see how life triumphs over death. He does not see death. Through faith, Abel, being dead, yet speaketh. Enoch speaks as one who ever liveth. In Abel, we see Christ, the crucified, and the boldness we have through the blood to enter in, in the new and living way that goes through the rent veil. In Enoch, we see Christ glorified and have life in the holiest, the walk with God, the living one. And as we go through this part, talking about Abel and Enoch, and then we're, we're also going to talk about Noah, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you're going to see how each one of them paints a picture, a different aspect of Christ and how that fits together into our relationship and, and all the work Christ did to redeem us. It's just amazing to, to look at it through this lens. So in connection with Enoch, there are three things taught us in regard to faith. The first is as to its nature. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that seek after him. Andrew says, faith is the spiritual sense by which we recognize the presence and character of the unseen God, both that he is and that he rewards the seeker. Desire is the root of faith. Without a hunger for God, his existence is a matter of indifference. The knowledge of his being does not affect the soul. Faith seeks for God. It believes that he is. It keeps the heart open towards him. It bows in humility and hope for him to make himself known. To know God, to see God in everything and everywhere in our daily life is to be, uh, in, in our daily life, to be conscious, conscious of his presence so that we always walk with him. This is the true nobility of man. This is the life that faith lives. This is the blessedness Jesus now fully revealed in the rending of the veil. So I love that. You know, let me go back here. To God, to know God, to see God in everything and everywhere in our daily life, to be conscious, conscious of his presence. I mean, that is a, a discipline in and of itself. I and mean, we can look at creation and we can see the fingerprints of God. But in addition to that, us being conscious constantly of his presence, if we were filled more with that, 
conscious reality that God is present with us, I think that would really take our self-life and our attachment to the world would just start to melt away because it's like that song. It's been going through my head this morning, all, all morning, but uh, it is um, turn your eyes upon Jesus and I love in the refrain, it says, And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. When we have that presence of God ever before our eyes, no matter what we're facing, no matter what the circumstances of our life, we will approach that situation, those circumstances, in a different way when we are conscious of God's presence with us. And I think, you know, I always told my kids growing up, when they wanted to watch something, maybe a movie or something on, on the television that I didn't think was good for them, I would say, well, how would you feel if Jesus himself was present, you know, sitting next to you on the couch watching this program? I mean, would you feel, would you feel ashamed? Would you feel like, oh, Jesus wouldn't approve of this? And, you know, I, I, I try to remember that in my own life, even now, because David said, I will set no vile thing before my eyes. What was David saying? He was saying, I am conscious of the fact that God is present always. So I can't, I can't put anything vile before my eyes. And that is a good, <clears throat> excuse me, that is a good way to look at the presence of God. Like, what are we doing with our lives knowing that God is, is watching and present? He's not some distant God, you know, above the heavens looking down over the banister of heaven like we've been, I, you know, I don't know how many of you have heard that, but I remember hearing that years ago. No, he is a, he's not a distant God. If, if you have come and, to the Lord and said, Please, I, I'm grieved by my life and I'm turning it over to you, I'm surrendering to you, then God says, he says, if you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. So if God seems distant to you, you might want to ask yourself why. What is it that's keeping him away? You, you know, pretty much, <clears throat> excuse me, all over the scripture, it talks about how God will not be near to wickedness. I mean, after all, that's why he had to put Adam and Eve out of the garden because of wickedness. Their fellowship with him, their nearness to him ended when they turned to the world and to themselves. But anyway, getting back to Andrew, I took a little side, side trail there. He says um, that the true nobility, that this is the true nobility, this is the life that faith lives. This is the blessedness Jesus has now fully revealed in the rending of the veil, that God is present always and everywhere. Faith can walk with God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and also a rewarder of him, of them that seek after him. Faith believes that God can be found, that he can and will make himself known, that he cares for everyone who truly longs for him. That is the kicker right there. I know I've said this before, but people, I think people want to believe, even people that go to church, even people that uh, claim to be uh, Christians, they tend to want to think that God just loves everyone. And I know I've said in a previous video, maybe maybe a little bit of, I, I thought about it, maybe a better way to say this is, I said I couldn't find unconditional love, like people talk about God's unconditional love in the Bible. But I think a better way to frame that is that I don't see unconditional relationship with God in the Bible. Because, yes, God so loved the world that he sent his son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish and have everlasting life. But God never promised unconditional relationship. And relationship is the, the thing that is being restored through redemption is relationship to God. When God put Adam and Eve out of the garden, he still loved them. But the love that they could experience, the nearness, the relationship is, I think maybe it's a matter of semantics, like what, or definition, like what do you believe love is? Do you believe love is unconditional relationship? Well, that that's really what I was referring to. God still cared about Adam and Eve. 
but he could not be close to them. He could not have the daily walking in the cool of the garden with them because they had destroyed, they had destroyed that relationship. And God won't say, hey, you do whatever you want. I, I, I love you, you filthy little thing. You just come over and sit in my lap. That is not God. God, he may love you, but it's going to be from a distance. And hopefully you will do what's necessary to allow the redemption to take place for you personally in your life so that you are not at a distance from God eternally, because that is what hell will be part of and and we can't even conceive of what being distant from God because right now in this sinful cursed world it says that God reigns on the just and the unjust so there's there's things that people that don't care about God don't know about God don't serve God there are blessings of the fact that God is still um, involved in this world he still has the sun shining he still has nature doing its thing. He still feeds us. Um, there's things that the, the people that are blind, the people that are off doing their own thing, they're not even, they just take it for granted. But it's really a gift from God. But one day, every visage of God, every connection to God, if, if you are not reconciled to God, you don't have a thriving relationship with God, one day... And I hope this isn't you, but one day people will be separated from God in every way. And we can't even, we can't even conceive of what that's like. But I'm going to move on because I don't want to have, have a video that is too long. But let's see. Faith believes that God can be found, that he will and make, will and make, that he can, will and make himself known. That he cares for everyone who truly longs for him. That he has a divine reward for the seeker after him. In seeking him the way, may in seeking him, I'm sorry, I must have uh, had a typo here. In seeking him in the way that he wants us to um, seek after him, we may, we may at times, let me start over. In seeking him, oh, okay. It's just how I'm reading it. I'm sorry. In seeking him, the way may at times be dark and long and the progress slow. Faith honors God with its confidence as the God of love and truth. He will reward and bless. So it's so basically a sentence that was messing me up. Um, it, it's, it's warning us that, yeah, sometimes this is a long process. Sometimes it's, it seems like it's taking forever, but he real, will reward and bless. Let the deep restfulness of this assured conviction be the root of all your seeking after God. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the second lesson, remember he told us there were three. The second lesson we have is as to what the reward of faith will be. And he goes back to the scripture. Before his translation, talking about Enoch, he had been well-pleasing to God. Without faith, it is impossible to be well-pleasing. And then he says, God created us for himself. It is our destiny. We were made with the one object of pleasing him and being his delight. God is perfect goodness. A state of life in which we please God must be one of goodness and perfect blessedness. <clears throat> Excuse me. In our fallen state, we are well-pleasing by faith. So if you ever wondered like, you know, God, I, I messed up again. You know, I, I, I thought some thoughts or I said some things that were not kind. And, um, and we just feel, sometimes we feel so crushed and condemned by our own guilt. But by faith, we can come to God and we can ask him to forgive us. And then our fallen state that we're all in right now, um, we can still be well-pleasing to God by faith. And I put a little note here, like the leaven in the loaves. <clears throat> excuse me, treasure in clay jars is the Holy Spirit indwelling us. And by the way, the loaves I'm talking about is about the, the table of showbread where the Holy it's a, a picture um, of other things, but the, the Holy Spirit filling as yeast fills the dough, um, as we are clay jars, but there's a treasure within us. That's the Holy Spirit indwelling us, empowering us 
to overcome sin, empowering us to mortify the deeds of the flesh. Faith is the surrender to God. Faith honors God by acknowledging and seeking His presence, by expecting everything from Him alone, by resting on Him. Faith gives God His place and His glory. Faith wills what God wills. Faith lets God have His own way and makes Him all in all. No wonder that faith is infinitely well-pleasing to Him. Then comes the third lesson. Faith knows that it pleases God. Enoch had witness born to him that he had been well-pleasing to God. It was by faith that this witness came. It is of the very essence of a healthy faith. God does not leave himself without a witness to the soul that trusts in him. Least of all in the New Testament, the Lord Jesus promised to send from the Father in heaven the Holy Spirit as a witness of all that took place in heaven on his ascension. The Holy Spirit brought down out of that holiest of all within the veil as an actual reality, the kingdom of heaven into men's hearts so that the presence of God and the Father's delight in his Son and the Father's love now shed abroad in in their hearts became their everyday experience and consciousness. And even so now still to them who seek and receive and yield to the Holy Ghost in his full indwelling and witness. Faith receives and gives the witness that we are well-pleasing. By faith, Enoch walked with God. My brother, who with Abel has drawn nigh to God in the infinite self-sacrifice of Jesus, learn with Enoch to walk with God the walk of faith. Let the presence of God be thy one desire, the will of God thy one choice, the help of God thy one trust, the likeness to God thy one hope. Let every day, the most ordinary one, the most difficult one, be a day with God. As one of the days of heaven upon earth, a day of which faith is the beginning and the end. Let all the teaching of the epistle as to the wonderful, the perfect, the everlasting redemption in the Son of God have this one result, that it make thee full of faith in God and guide thee to draw nigh to God, to walk with God. And thou too shalt know what it is not to see death, by faith to be translated and have it written, He was not, for God took him. Can you imagine having that written about you? That you walk with God so closely that you're just gone. Um, I heard someone say one time that, uh, let me see if I can remember exactly how he worded it, but like he he wanted to, um, I think maybe along the lines of John the Baptist saying he must increase and I must decrease. And he said, I want to be so full of God and not full of myself that like death would be just, it, it would barely be like anything of a change because I was so full of God and not of myself. Anyway, I hope that, I can't remember exactly how he worded it, but it was something like that. Um, And Andrew ends here, By faith that lives in the unseen, that allows Christ to do his mighty work, that believes that the presence of God is now its home, and so enters into its rest. Well, I hope this has been encouraging and helps you see things maybe in a little different way. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. God bless.